right? We have a definitive area that if the Bulls lose for tomorrow or whatever the case may be in the next couple of days, we're gonna, we're gonna really, really swan dive. Again, there's nothing. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of, a uh, Wednesday edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly update show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Just a reminder, because I, I, I get this question all the time, uh, Thursdays, which is tomorrow, uh, that's my usual night off. So there are no um, nightly updates on Thursday, unless one of my kids saw like a sporting event or something that I couldn't get out of during the middle of the week. And then I record one on Thursday. So just as FYI, there will be uh, no uh, video tomorrow night. So let's talk about the tape. Um, you're not going to really get a good feel today um, of what the market did and did not do, right? Uh, if you look at the scoreboard today, nothing is going to raise an eyebrow. You had the Dow up three tenths of a percent, S&P flat, NASDAQ flat, and the Russell lost uh, one and a half percent. The problem with that statement is if the Bulls wanted to fight, this was the day for it. Yesterday, uh, and kind of just kind of going back two weeks, right? At two weeks, it took to lose the 20 day moving average uh, before yesterday. It took two days to lose the 20 day moving average. We talked about the scenario, how incredibly sell bias that was a you know, pretty big signal. And you know, we were hoping for um, we were hoping for a, a little bit of a gap up today, right? Uh, we talked about the names we wanted to uh, view for today: uh, Nvidia, uh, AMD, Tesla. Uh, although Amazon and Meta held, I still like them for tomorrow. We had we we, we really wanted a situation that the bulls gapped up today, uh, right? Gapped up today after a 330 point decline. The Nasdaq gets stuffed into supply start taking down yesterday's channels and hopefully get a swan dive. And again, we'll, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second, but this is how we were literally lined up for the whole morning. There was, there was nothing more than look at beta. You don't need to be creative with stocks. You don't need to look at third tier stocks, fourth tier stocks, all these other things. You want to look at the names that have the highest probability of an average true range expansion if they lose the, the levels. And we'll get, again, we'll get to them individually in a second. But what the Bulls did today was exactly what we wanted, right? You had a little bit of a gap up today uh, in some names, um, you know, small little gap down on others, but well below, you know, still well above uh, the previous range. And the only question that we wanted, because I definitely knew I didn't want to buy stock today. Um, I The only question we had going into today was, how many of these things were going to confirm. And you know, we got our answer right from the word go. If you look at these candles, and, and again, I only put five pivots, uh, five pivots on the feed today. If you look at the pivots, that, right? If you look at the 60 minute candles today, this is all you needed, right? This is all you needed. These opening range channels were huge. Tesla destroyed, right? Netflix destroyed, Nvidia, Right, Nvidia destroyed, AMD da, 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 destroyed. So that's all you need, right? You don't need to be creative in, in certain situations. From the technical point of view, though, the bulls did hold on to the 10 day moving average, right? Everybody see that? So we lost the 20, lost the five, we tested the 10, lost the 10, reclaimed the 10, and now we have a definitive bottom, right? We have a definitive area that if the bulls lose for tomorrow or whatever the case may be in the next couple of days, we're gonna we're gonna really really swan dive again. There is nothing below the 10-day moving average. The next measure of potential is going down to 269. So if the Qs start losing, you know 281 on a close, man, you got 17 points of downside uh, ahead of you. Listen, is it possible we rally tomorrow? Of course. Again, there's nothing there's nothing in the cards that always say everything has to go straight down. But that's the whole point. The the only way I can see myself getting bullish again, you know, is if we start reclaiming back the 20 day moving average that we that we lost yesterday. And sometimes that's that. And if you look at a lot of charts tonight, you'll see that a lot of stocks kind of bounce back from morning lows and that's okay. 
but you also see a lot of stocks that didn't. And if you look at today's action, the the you know the the, the weakness today, right? The downside was was carried by the cruise liners, right? You had CCL, you had RCL, a lot of weakness. The semiconductor names that we've been talking about, uh, definitely the weakest group. And Nvidia, and you had your AMDs of the world, and you had your um, and you had your AMAT, which I kind of like for tomorrow. We'll give, I'll give you guys a couple of. Uh, ideas going into tomorrow's session, but that's kind of what we are up. And it, even when we were up today, you know, you know, 30, 40 points on the Nasdaq, I kept on saying, well, how, you know, how, if you're if you're an investor, right, or even in a trader who just trades in today, how can you turn around and say this is a good day if yesterday we lost 330 points on the Nasdaq and we're only up 30? And that's before the Nasdaq went red and we closed the, the day red. So I, I think simplicity sometimes the way you look at things is the most important thing. And again, for me, again, like I said, for me to get bullish, we'd have to reclaim at least 290 on the close on the Qs. But I'll tell you one thing, if we get a close below 281 tomorrow, and that's the 10 day moving average, this is a wrap. I mean, this is a wrap and this is a wrap for 17 points of downside. Now again, maybe not in one day, right? Maybe not in two days, but that's kind of where uh, the strength and the weakness is going to lie. And, and again, when you go through um, you know, multiple charts today, especially in the NASDAQ, you'll see there's a lot of names that look like they're about to roll over. I mean, look at Google, right? Look at Google. Google just got survived by the 10 day moving average. If Google fails, right? If Google fails the 10 day, look how much room you have. I think they split July the 15th. Speaking of split, you had Shopify, right? First day after the split. Well, again, not a lot of, you know, not a lot of great response was down six, 7%. Uh, first close below the 10 day moving average. I like Shopify. This thing starts losing uh, today's channel tomorrow. I mean, look how much room you have. You have room down to uh, $29. And now the fact that the stock is, you know, a $30 stock, it's it's gonna be much more liquid. If you see how Shopify traded today, it traded two, three cent spreads instead of two, three dollars spread, 100 share lots. So even if it turns into something like uh, an Amazon, at least they'll be able to be traded on a daily basis instead of birthdays, holidays, uh, and special occasions. And you know, again, anything that closed below the 10 day, I'm definitely, definitely watching. Uh, AMAT, I like for tomorrow as well, right? First close below the 10 day moving average. All AMAT has to do is lose this little channel here uh, and this thing uh, goes lower. Uh, a name, for example, let me just give you guys one more. A name, for example, let me see what else I like for tomorrow. Uh, I, I kind of, you know, look, look, look at Twitter, man. For a stock that's supposed to get taken over and everything is approved and blah, 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 blah. You know, we saw a bunch of 35 weeklies coming in with size. Again, first close below the 10 day moving average. Again, you know, listen, you could take things on fair, you know, face value, but you know, if they're telling you the deal is approved and everything is all great, you know, why are they, you know, why are they coming in for 35 puts? weekly puts when, when, the, when the deal was done at 54.20. Again, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I see what I see and I kind of react to that. So look, I, I think the value, the values to the downside, even a name like Rivian, right? Even a name like Rivian, look, look at this chart. You're not gonna see this thing, you know, very, very obvious, but look how many times it held the bottom range here. This thing starts losing the bottom range, this thing's gonna go lower. So even if we rally tomorrow, look, unless I find like a range somewhere, a sneaky something for cash flow, like a Tesla, I couldn't care less if this market rally tomorrow, 100, 200 points, makes a difference to me. Because if, if again, if the NASDAQ, the majority of their members are on the lower range or in the middle of the range, and they can't rally if the indexes rally, I'm very, I'm a very patient man. I don't need to go balls deep tomorrow. You know, I can wait till Friday with option expiration, which is the most uh, aggressive day anyway. And there's a high probability if they're betting in one direction, uh, predominantly in one, for, you know, for the whole week, it's probably going to get carried out uh, on on Friday's action. So again, uh, you know, I'm I'm sell bias as far as setups. If the market rallies tomorrow, 100, 200 points, God bless. I have zero zero interest uh, in the upside until they uh, reclaim the 290 level. That's the discipline, right? Maybe I'll take something for a scalp tomorrow. You know, a quick scalp, blah blah blah, to the upside if the market is strong, but. Uh, I, I'm, I'm literally 100% sell bias as far as setups going into tomorrow. Uh, if there's something on the upside that we've set an alert for, God bless. But until then, you know, again, that is the discipline, letting everything play out. Again, you don't need to trade every single day. And because the market's open doesn't mean your your theory is going to play out. And again, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go against the, you know, I'm not gonna go against price action. But again, I'm very, very patient to see that price action uh, play out, just like the, we we talked about today. So let's talk about today. 
super aggressive guys and, and this is this is what i keep on re referring to a premium session right the biggest average true range are always beta stocks right it's the high beta mega cap stocks why because they have the biggest range so somebody today uh asked me hey dan what do you think of intel on the downside and again there's nothing wrong with intel there's absolutely nothing wrong with intel and if you look at intel it's a semiconductor it went down today right look how much it was down everybody see how much it was down right 50 cents now look at the video right look in the video at one point the video was down nine look at amd right look at amd amd at one point was down four tesla at one point was down 28. so my point is when you get a premium setup and everything looks like it's about to flush why fight with the one that you're going to fight with for 40 50 cents if you can get the one that potentially could go 10 15 20 dollars right guys so that's what we talk about a window that's what we talk about a premium hand yes can a stock like rivian go down a hundred percent but if you have exactly the same setup as rivian as you do on tesla well why the hell are you going to fight with rivian for 50 cents when you can make 20 dollars on tesla that's all i kind of uh, meant by you know choose your battles choose the ones that will give you the biggest average true range and you can kick down that that you know that window that you have during the day and just take advantage of the violence of that, and that's exactly what happened today so let's talk about this uh netflix uh 178 30 178 if it builds below can flush netflix got hammered i still think netflix goes lower so here is the 178 let me show you the the 60 minute charts so here is the 178 level right over here it took out the 178 went all the way down to uh 175 again nice move on netflix nothing wrong on netflix uh nvidia got murdered they were coming for the 155 150 weeklies one after another after another 158 held twice if it builds below can flush here is nvidia right here is nvidia so you see how many times it held 158 158 158 excuse me it actually held it three times it held 158 three times and this thing went from 158 all the way down to uh the 151 area destroyed on one candle absolutely destroyed uh amazon i was watching they held 107 again i'm still watching amazon uh again even though it was up today for for a good part of the day and it held up i mean look look at amazon's chart man I, I, again it might not it might not trigger tomorrow it might not trigger the next day but at some point if they do pull the market again look how many times they held this area here look how many times they held this 107. if this thing starts finally building below 107 it could get back down to the 101 range so uh definitely keep an eye on that meta also held that 160 area uh amd got destroyed as well uh 80 20 and 7943 if it builds below can flush here was amd right so it took out it took out the 80 took out the 79.20 and went all the way down to 76 and change this thing starts losing 76 there's more downside there uh as well uh this was obviously the big one this is always the big one whenever in doubt look at tesla uh tesla 38685 held three times pre-market if it builds below can flush that's also the daily so here was tesla definitely the trade of the day at least for me um here was tesla it held uh it held the 85 look how many times it held 85 once twice three times right three times that's also the 85 is also the low on june the 20 no excuse me on june the june the 23rd 685 was also the long so uh, also the, the the bottom there so you had three times uh three times uh held 60 minute lows broke the daily lows and the stock went down about 20 25 uh, about 20 points or so great move on tesla again i don't think the story is done yet uh it got it, it got rejected back to where it got uh where it got penetrated that's what i said so we're gonna watch tesla for the next couple of days it might have a bounce day but point is i want to watch the bottom range here i still believe if it violates in the future uh today's session we could see a move back uh into the 6 30. so that's it that's it guys very aggressive session today uh again the discipline is and, and this is kind of the words of encouragement uh that i i, I want to pass along especially the new traders number one you don't need to trade every single day you're trading because you're getting value not because the, the market's open and kind of a little bit of a tip to all you guys who started trading in the last couple of years you ever hear the expression um i gave back my whole day right when when do you think that happens right it's not in the morning it's usually in the afternoon if you want to see a really good increase in your bottom line for the year 
stop trading in the afternoons because what happens in the afternoons is instead of the morning when channels expand and people are chasing in the afternoon the channels contract and people are underwater because of the whole day they, they couldn't they couldn't really get uh, anywhere so that's that's kind of my tip of the day if you want to really see uh, your performance really get better uh, just stop trading the afternoons you'll, you'll see a world of a difference uh, whatever you like in the afternoon you're gonna love the next day guys god bless have a great night again no video tomorrow i'll see you guys all tomorrow in the webinar and i'll see the rest of you guys on the weekend update take care